Today I wanted to show you guys a deep dive into my PWM and this is actually Mark II of the PWM which I haven't shown out before so I'm going to show you all the improvements I did to that old PWM setup and, and go over just pulse width modulation basics in general. So yeah let's get into it. Um, let's start out. So this is not the most comfortable. Ugh. So the reason you might want a PWM is to conserve battery uh, have more control over your thrust so you can change it from you know instead of just one to two for five you have a full range of control over the thrust also it, it at least in my case I actually created a little hand control for it so I don't actually need to turn around to make the the trolling motor go backwards and forwards which is huge like it, that's a huge benefit on a standard Minn Kota motor there's five speeds but e even if you're at one or five it's still drawing the same amount of power so in order for it to go slower than its max speed, because it's drawing the max amount of power even on one, the way, the way that the motor does it is it dissipates a lot of that extra energy as heat into the motor. So what the PWM does is instead of having a, direct, a, a DC connection, essentially it's, it's a PWM connection. So that means that instead of a steady current, it actually pulses the, the, the electricity. And the shorter the pulse, the lower the power, and the longer the pulse, the more the power. So the PWM essentially just tells it how fast to pulse electricity from the battery to the motor. And so that saves battery, uh, saves battery power because you're not running into that heat issue. You're actually giving this motor less or more power. But the other benefit I have is I have a cool hand control for it. So I have backwards, or forward, reverse, and then this dial is a 0 to 100 dial. So let's go forward, and then if I turn it on, now you'll see as I spin, you can watch the motor down here. Slow, and I spin more. And faster and faster and faster until at 100%. Now you're at like that flat speed five on there. And then I can, I have full control over that with my hand. I can push it in reverse. So now it's spinning the, the backwards. Um, incredibly helpful. One thing to note is you don't wanna go from forward to reverse. You wanna stop in the middle or slow down because you don't want that motor to jerk backwards on itself so fast and it, uh, it can damage your Minn Kota. So that's one note. That's the basics of it. So I have control over the thrust, I have control over forward and reverse, and it's all connected uh, back to the boat, back to this, this single battery box. So the first iteration was, <laughs> it was just my battery with, with the, uh, a Tupperware, like a round Tupperware that had all of the PWM stuff in it, and it looked really janky. So I wanted to improve that. I, I got a battery box, which includes a couple features that help just in general. Uh, and then it also fits the PWM inside here. So instead of having two units of the battery in the PWM, I just have one single box. So yeah, let's, let's open this up. Let's take a look and see what I've got here and then uh, I'll go over it. Just at face value of this box, we have some kind of handy things. We have a USB port here for charging the phone. We have a car charging port over here and I actually have a I got an adapter for my Garmin for my fish finder that plugs into this so that way I don't need to worry about having two connections off of the actual battery posts which is nice uh, another nice option is we have these little meters here they uh, can tell me if the battery is you know 25 50 or 75% or full and we have a built-in circuit breaker so we have two of them we have one for the motor, which is 60 amp circuit breaker, and one for the accessories at 10 amp. So that is gonna help ensure that I don't fry anything, because that's important. And it also has this nice strap, so I can lift it all at once. Ugh. And uh, it carries the battery and the PWM in there. So let's go ahead and open this up, and we'll show you what it looks like. So yeah, the battery itself is connected to the lid here, where it connects with all the, uh, the top electronics, the circuit breakers, and the meters. And then after that, we have our PWM, which you can see these two Minn Kota Quick Connects. This one goes to the motor, it's M for motor, and then this one goes to the battery, B for battery. And what we do is we have this in here like that, and then it'll pop out the front so you can actually see how it looks when it's closed. There's those single batteries will come out, we'll connect them up here, connect them up there. We have these nice wing nuts, so it's really easy to uh, take off and put on. And then from there, we have uh, another single cable, or a double cable that goes out from this side. It, come, go, it goes through this little notch, 
and then that goes to the motor. So make sure to mark, if you have these quick disconnects like this, make sure to mark your motor and then battery. Definitely important. And then obviously the controller here, this is a, another quick disconnect. You can actually pull that off really easy. Um, this goes, and actually the, the, it was a trailer cable, so the, the cable itself is really long. I actually wrapped it around the battery once or twice before having it come out here, which goes through this little hole. And uh, it gives me enough leash, so it's about two, it's about three feet, and uh, I can reach it even when I'm standing. Ugh. You'll see what I did is, this is actually the same board that I used for the for the fish finder mount. I had a lot of spare left over, so I just uh, cut it up into this, uh, the box shape. I hold them together with bolts uh, going all the way through. Here it is, all taken apart. So we have the PWM unit itself. All of the connections that come off of the board are on this side. And they also have some pre-made connections, which are this guy uh, here for the the meter, and then there's the control one, which I actually kind of replaced with this. Um, so I will have a link in the description to all of the ones I used. So the PWM, the uh, controller, the uh, cable that I used and everything, because it was kind of a struggle to find the exact things I needed. So there's a sticker here, and then on the board it's printed differently. It's actually the opposite. The sticker is correct for whatever reason. So on this particular one that I bought, don't follow what's printed on the circuit board as far as motor and battery, just follow the sticker. But as you can see, we have the power hooked up, which goes to the battery in this case, and then the motor here. So these are all wired with um, Encoda, or these are quick release cables. So I'll, I'll leave a link to these below. So you, I bought these to make, make sure that if I need to, I can unplug them and plug them back in really easily and they're more secure than like a, an alligator clip. This is like a specialized trailer cabling that I, that I bought. It's a little overkill, like it's, it's really thick and you can see like the controller here. It's a pretty meaty cable coming off the controllers. Yeah, so it needs eight cords. So if you know of a smaller eight cable option, I'm all ears. Um, I'm thinking Cat5, but it's pretty thin, so I'm not sure if that's going to carry the current. Uh, so for now, I'm just leaving it with this. But I'll leave a link to this in the description below. It's all eight cables in one with the uh, the nice quick quick disconnect plugs. This is actually the first time I've soldered anything. See all these connections that I, that I spliced with the wires to get to the new uh, quick disconnects and all of these splices. These are all actually soldered. I'd probably recommend doing that because the wiring in here is pretty thin and you want to make sure it's, it's snug. I tried to do it with just uh, crimping and it didn't really work out because the cables are so small. I It was actually my first soldering project and if I can do it then, then you could do it because it was pretty easy honestly. So I bought some L clamps here to, to make the box. I bought these bolts that go through the top and the bottom so you have this stable, stable part and if I need to I can take that lid off show you guys obviously and then work on it if if, uh, if it breaks or whatnot later so this box is pretty cool i'm actually pretty happy with it uh and it all goes in here which it's not waterproof like there's it's not watertight but it does have this nice overhang so it actually kind of goes over the the lip of the box and that makes it pretty much waterproof as, as far as like rain is concerned so that is that's awesome too i don't need to worry about sealing this uh, because this is water pretty much waterproof and uh, it's also nice that there's a lot of space around this thing to make sure that the heat can dissipate out which is important but yeah what else could I say do you see it we scared him away so this part this piece is actually from it's like a it's like the wiring that you get on the side of your house that goes up and whatnot it's like that um, except it's mainly just for like a, an electric connector connector in here. Uh, I just bought it and then I actually drilled out the hole, the post hole for this. So if I can get it there, the post hole for this, and then drilled out the hole for this. So you can actually see that hole is just drilled for the uh, the post, and then there's a square cut out here. And I used hot glue. You can tell how nice that looks to seal up all of the the holes and so this and then I use some electrical tape on this one I don't know why but I did 
it all closes in here and there's a gasket that goes around. So the the actual connection connection where you um, you know close it all up is waterproof because this is actually meant for outdoor use. This guy it's like a couple bucks at uh, the hardware store, Park Rose Hardware. Everything else, I think almost everything else I bought online on Amazon, and I'll leave links again in the description below. Uh, some tips: so the PWM does generate heat, so you don't want it to be in a super enclosed spot. You want it to kind of have a little bit of airflow, or at least some air available. Uh, to cool it down. To secure everything to the actual board itself, I use zip ties. So I have two zip ties connected together here and uh, just drill holes to match on the other side. And it actually works really well. Um, and I can replace them if I need to. And it's not, it didn't require any, any extra modifications to any of these things. So uh, pretty happy with, with how the zip ties turned out, honestly. I kind of thought they might be a little janky and they might just slip off, but they've been pretty solid. If, if I can't fix it with zip ties and duct tape, then is it worth fixing? You right? <laughs> After I knew that this thing had the awesome car adapter, I uh, I went out and then and uh, got a a Garmin specific car adapter, which is kind of expensive i'm not gonna lie i'll put a link to it in the in the description but it is kind of expensive but it plugs in right here Ugh, boom gives me power from the battery from the same connection with the single same connection we have here it goes through this with the fancy uh built-in circuit breakers and i don't have to worry about that at all so that's super nice so when i made the when i made all the changes i wanted to make sure that i could take the pwm out of the equation so if something fries with this I have options if I'm on the water to, you know, use the regular controls. So I made sure that the, the these are the, the qu another quick disconnect. So if I need to, I can un undo this and just plug it directly into the motor, which will then draw directly from the battery instead of going through the PWM. So that was really important. I wanted to make sure that like the motor's function was not 100% reliant on the PWM. So if it die if it dies, I still have you know power on the water. If you don't want the whole battery box. I do still recommend getting at least a 50 amp circuit breaker uh, to make sure that you don't fry your motor uh, or otherwise, or your electronics if you have it on there. If you get the box, box is super nice because it has a built in uh, and it holds everything, but that's just my setup. So if your needs are different, then at least make sure you put a circuit breaker between the PWM and your motor. The way I steer it, I keep the motor straight back. I don't, I don't uh, have it turned at all. So it's always straight back and instead of going turning around and moving it i found that if i just use my oars to to kind of you know give one side or another a little more resistance and turn that helps a lot and it's really easy to troll that way too which is great uh, and i learned that the reverse on this motor full reverse is like 1.4 to 1.8 miles per hour which is like perfect for trout so thanks for watching i hope you learned something or got some ideas um, if you did enjoy this video definitely comment below what you think if you have any questions about this comment below and I'll answer them. If you like outdoor content, fishing, foraging, hiking, and whatnot in general, definitely think about giving me a sub. Um, I like these how-tos as well, but a lot of my content is just adventuring outdoors in the Pacific Northwest. So if you like that kind of stuff, think about subbing. I'd appreciate it. But yeah, thanks guys. Until next time, uh, enjoy the weather and uh, keep on fishing.